Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. Greetings, and welcome to Quantum Healing with Candace. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm your host, Candace Craw goldman This program was created to assist humans in this rapidly changing world, and its foundation is based upon the late, great Dolores Cannon's work and humanity's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and collective realities. I'm a full-time practitioner of Dolores' method and have had, have had the honor and privilege of working with and alongside of her for several years. I'd like to take this moment to thank N5D for its support of this show and also Quantum Healing and Dolores and all of those out there who continue her work and her discoveries in healing. Today is October 2nd, 2015. And actually, this is going to be a really important show, I think. We're calling it the 411 on QHHT. And I'm bringing on a wonderful friend and colleague today named MJ Ollinger to help me talk about all things QHHT, which is called quantum healing hypnosis in the long form. So a little bit about MJ. MJ was born with an inner sense of knowing, navigating the world with her intuitive perspective and staying open to unlimited possibilities. She's been a longtime nurse, She's a family woman, an artistic quilter, and a grandmother. An important story about MJ is in December 2011, her 40-year-old son, Jason, left the planet by suicide, and her world was turned upside down and right side out as she experienced the deep, dark pit of grief and loss. And some of that brought her, I know, to QHHT. She has certifications in several modalities and maintains her RN licensure. But her focus is exclusively QHHT. She's a certified advanced level two practitioner and an active participant of the forum community for dedicated practitioners all over the world. And besides facilitating QHHT sessions, MJ is a really important part of our community because she's working on an amazing project of indexing all of Dolores' books by subject matter. She's an archivist and a scholar, then, of Dolores Cannon's work. And these indexes provide a reference to assist practitioners in their educational learning as we all move on. And I want to welcome MJ to the program and let's see I need to press the button there you are hi MJ hi Candace. thank you for the invitation this evening oh you're so very welcome I'm so very very happy to have you so for our listeners out there I, I'd like to tell you a little bit how we're going to play the show tonight. We're going to give a brief history of QHHT and Dolores and how she got into this. And then we're going to talk about who and and why people come for sessions, their typical questions, and an overview of a typical QHHT session. And then we're going to take questions and comments from listeners or those of you out there who'd like to know more. So, why don't we just start like Dolores Cannon says, 
at the beginning is always a good place to start, wouldn't you say, MJ? How did Dolores get into this work so long ago? Well, I think, in all honesty, um, Dolores, um, we could spend the next two hours just on her life, her experience, who (laughs) she is. Um, She's a pioneer, investigator, reporter, um, you know, finder of lost knowledge, world traveler. She has so many accolades. Um, Just talking about Dolores in and of itself is a beautiful um, journey through life. Um, (laughs) However, to go very briefly with Dolores, um, it was a good, what, 50 years, Candace? Um, yeah, I think it just been about 50 years. Yeah. And she um, started out um, as a quote-unquote traditional um, hypnotherapist with her husband. And from there, they that's how she got into these clients that were starting to go to past lives. And uh, people really want to get into her history in detail. The book that she wrote on Five Lives Remembered um, really talks about the initiation of her journey into this work. Um, And fast forward over these years, um, she tweaked it to the point where it is an easy approach to learn if you're anyone is seeking to learn this technique as a practitioner. And it is also a technique um, that our clients um, embrace because they're not required um, to do really anything other than just to (laughs) talk about themselves and relax and allow Mm -hmm. the flow to happen. And that's the beauty of her technique. Um, amazing results. So in that, her approach is really a non-traditional. So if someone says, well, what is QHHT? I like to start out and say it's a non-traditional hypnotherapy approach. Mm -hmm. In other words, as Dolores would say, you know, we don't swing the watch in front of our clients <laughs> and uh, we don't make them talk like a chicken you know that's mm-hmm. Dolores talks about that stage um, um, hypnosis for fun and you know show and stuff like that it's it's nothing that it's it's at the other end of the spectrum so what I tell people is if you're looking for some mind bending um, information mm-hmm and going to your core, your inner soul, your higher self, um, the God source, whatever you deem that name that you're uh, familiar with, we come in contact and we work with this higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so the beauty of it is the client is the one that not only um, embraces this and gains, it is also... It's like we open the door to that client's journey, helping them (laughs) discover information they may not have been able to get to. And then after the session is over, I know I'm kind of fast forward here, but after the session is over, that continuum of healing and connection remains for the rest of their Mm -hmm. life. Whereas I, I... I think I'm comfortable in saying traditional hypnotherapy sometimes is a shorter acting, you know, a quick fix maybe to stop smoking or weight, those yeah. things that we're familiar with. And that all has a purpose. Um, if you're looking for a deep connection and amazing results, then quantum healing is for you. Do you have something to add? I try to be... I <laughs> that's really great. No, you you did a fabulous job. I think the one thing, the one very important difference between QHHT and traditional hip hypnosis and hypnotherapy, it, an important distinction is the fact that in in hypnotherapy and in in traditional hypnosis, in general, 
the setup was that that the facilitator would um, offer suggestions to the client while they're in a suggestible state. And in QHHT, nothing of the kind happens. We it, it's completely client focused and client driven. The facilitator of a QHHT session doesn't and would never think to offer up any suggestions for change, you know, based upon their own thoughts and understanding and reality. All of this comes from the client. I think that's it's a big difference between the two modalities in general. I totally want to underscore that for the listeners because that is a key component. And that's one of the questions I think um, as practitioners we get asked, you know, do you lead this? Do you lead us somewhere? And Mm -hmm. we don't. We don't lead. So excellent point, Mm -hmm. excellent point. So MJ, why would anyone come to have a session or what kind of, people come for sessions what's the typical client or maybe even the not typical client Um, tell us what kind of people come for QHHT sessions why oh that's a broad question and the answer would be (laughs) um, I don't believe the practitioners have identified a stereotype in other words um, when someone calls um, a practitioner to have a session, we have no idea what that person's life is, what they're looking for. The commonality would be um, in their questions as far as they want to know about their life purpose, what are they supposed to be doing. Those, you know, are a common question or a common theme that we see. But the kind of person is really so individual And that's the beauty of QHHT. It is not tailored to any specific um, personality. It is is just we work with the client, wherever the client is. Maybe they've just begun their journey, you know, connecting and discovering their gifts and even becoming aware of Dolores. And then we have... Um, other clients that, you know, have been in the spirituality years and years and that's how they live their lives and they're in tune and they meditate and um, in diet, you know, mind, body, spirit, everything. So it's, um, I can say there's no stereotype. Mm -hmm. But the people come because they're seeking answers. And they that's, really want that's to That's a great know way of putting happening. it right there. Just answers for something, right? Just either either yes. answers about a, a particular problem, a whole set of problems. Maybe they have a physical problem. Maybe they have a mystery on their hands. But it's it's people who are looking for answers. I think that's a really – I'm sorry I jumped in on you, but I, I got very excited. I no. think that's just – you know that's it it's the it's such a jewel q h h t is going to give you some answers, no matter what your questions are exactly mm-hmm. and again, um you know we talked about the practitioner not leading well, the practitioner doesn't even know the outcome mm-hmm. of the session, in other words, a client comes in with a list of questions, and we'll talk about that later, but they're seeking information and that the information that comes through during um, the trance session, the trance um, portion of the session, um, we can't predict what information is coming through because we're working with that higher power. Mm-hmm. So, And there's, su- there's just such different... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, and there's just so many different questions and so many different outcomes to sessions as well. It's kind of like the uh, the box of don't know how it's going to play out. Yes. Now, we might want to um, clarify a couple of things, and that is um, through Dolores' guidelines to her practitioners, 
Um, we prefer um, people that are 18 years or older. Mm-hmm. And so, in other words, we don't um, have sessions with children or teenagers. Mm-hmm. And then there there is some other um, profiles, such as, you know, if someone is diagnosed with schizophrenia or um, a very severe mental um, problem where they're not perhaps connecting the dots on a daily basis, you know, they struggle with um, continuum of thinking, things like that. Um, at this time, you know, Dolores has asked us, you know, those are not the people that uh, will have the best outcome. So, and, and sometimes and we don't know inter- that until we talk to them, yeah. Right, and if I may interject there, though, even even children and even people who who have these, you know, um challenges in their life that Dolores says they don't make the best clients, even they can benefit from a surrogate session of QHHT. You know, it kind of gets into the advanced QHHT world when we talk about Dolores and her method. But but I've had many clients come to see me concerned about people who can't have a QHHT session themselves, loved ones who may be either too young or they might be in a coma or they may be too severely um, injured or something or maybe have schizophrenia, et cetera. And we are actually able to um, very often find out information about loved ones by going and exploring the consciousness of of a surrogate and that can be mm-hmm. extremely valuable and bring a lot of peace to the family and sometimes some incredible healing as well so even when that's the issue and that person may not be a candidate for the session themselves QHHT, QHHT can still often provide answers even for those people excellent point um I'll give an example of a of a surrogate session that I held. Um, the client didn't come in um, with the... Uh, she wasn't inquiring about a surrogate healing for her um, son and daughter. It was something that we discussed in the interview when she came in and we were um, talking. And, and what was happening is during the interview where the client tells about their life and their concerns and questions and health, those types of things. Um, She had mentioned that um, she had some specific concerns regarding her daughter and her son. And that's when I mentioned to her about the surrogate healing and how it works. Mm -hmm. And so briefly, how that does work is um, once we get permission um, to move forward with that. So in other words, I said to the client, I said, all you have to do is verbalize and through your heart, you know, that you would like to offer surrogate healing um, to your son and daughter. Well, the son and daughter were over 21. So, no, you know, mm-hmm. they're an adult. Um, but that's okay. So she said, yes, let's go ahead and and, and try that, she said. So when she was in trance and the timing was appropriate, um, I asked um, the client's higher self, and that's the power that we work with, to um, connect with the um, daughter's higher self and um, ask, you know, is it okay if we connect and we have some questions? Well, the response that came back was the daughter, higher self, um, responded positively, yes. So then we went on to do questions and and receive information. Then when her son um, was next on the list, we went through the same process of honoring and um, um, asking permission because, again, we don't lead and we don't... um, cross boundaries of of people's um, life of anywhere. 
So we got to the sun, and unfortunately, we got a no. And Mm -hmm. so, but it was done in a graceful way. Um, No one was offended. Um, Mm -hmm. But the answer that came back was, no, he is not ready to receive information. Mm -hmm. So with due respect, you know, that's kind of the flip side of, getting permission from the higher self and also mm-hmm. getting um, a stop, no, you know, the person's not ready. That must have been a very interesting session for you and a great validation of the method itself, you know, where where yes. one person says yes and the other one declines. Yes, it was. Um, mm-hmm. But it was done in a beautiful way. Um, mm mm-hmm. I mean, the client wasn't upset that we couldn't connect. And, I mean, I know from my own practice, I never get upset. I I trust um, that higher power because the higher power is what is truly um, providing information and facilitating what is best for the client. Yes, and, you know, actually, I think that kind of leads us right into... Another thing to talk about, higher power, how does religion or spiritual beliefs fit in to the practice of QHHT? A lot of people wonder about that and if people who don't believe in God can have sessions and if people believe in different kinds of things. How does that work? Well, I think religion is a term that is defined in the dictionary and that is on religious, quote-unquote, beliefs. And um, religion and their religious preference has is not associated with what happens in QHHT. What is associated is their belief. What is in their heart? What do they believe mm-hmm. in the higher power? It can have any name they want to, you know, label it. Um, with a label, but um, I know we have practitioners around the world and it's very interesting to hear uh, about their sessions because of different cultural beliefs, you know, that is um, couched in their religion because of, um, well, let's take Buddha, you know, Mm -hmm. and we could go through every religion and look at, you know, who do they look for as their kind of leader, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But um, it doesn't take a religion of any sort, but it does take a belief in oneself and a belief Mm -hmm. that comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. And how about atheists? Can an atheist have a QHHT session? Well, I wouldn't... that's a question I don't ask people. Are you atheist or not? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to be honest, I and I have not had someone um, request a session that says, I don't believe in anything after I'm gone. Um, mm-hmm. I just leave that door open. Mm-hmm. You know, they may say they're an atheist, and that's what they've been, been believing, but it's interesting to know that if they would call, they're inquiring. So... Mm-hmm. You know, Dolores has taught us that, you know, the person, the client, higher self, to, um, guides them to have a QHHT session, even before they pick up the phone and contact a practitioner. Mm-hmm. There's no coincidence. Absolutely. And, you know, I love the fact um we talk about this in our forum community, which is, you know, an international online community of practitioners practicing in the most far-flung places that, you know, you can imagine all over the planet. Mm-hmm. And what we talk about is this idea, this trend, this thing that we know that has been happening, and I, I would dare say happening more so in the last year or two, and that is as as soon as contact is made between the practitioner and the client, things start shaking 
and loosening and happening. And what we talk about is this connection, we believe, as practitioners, that that happens, that our SC or our higher power begins to have an agreement to work with the SC or the higher power of the client in a beneficial way. And more and more we hear stories about how things, you know, begin to happen for the client. And sometimes the practitioner, too, after contact has been made, and sometimes the wait between just making an appointment and and showing up, sometimes some significant shifts are made before they ever even walk through the door. Isn't that sometimes what you find happening, MJ? Yes, and in reality, the client will not always be aware of that happening. But after (laughs) we do the debriefing with them, they start connecting the dots. And, And we'll hear things like, oh, well, that's why I was supposed to call you. Or I found you on Dolores' website. Or, you know, this just came across my computer, and but I don't know anything about it. And so we, <laughs> we find how they end up, you know, having a session. It's so interesting, but we know it's been guided by their higher power. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> And so when clients contact us, one of the questions that they ask very often is, can sessions be done remotely? Can they be done on the telephone? Can they be done long distance? And what do we have to to tell them when they ask that question, MJ? I hear <laughs> Del- Dolores' voice <laughs> right away. Yeah. No Skype. <laughs> you cannot do this. Uh, via Skype, and no, um, no, no. She's, yeah. And Dolores was not against technology. What she wanted and developed in her approach was all the safeguards and safety measures for the client. Mm-hmm. So she says, you know, if you were c- trying to conduct a session over Skype, and um, the person is in trance. And all of a sudden, you know, their computer goes down or phone line goes down or, mm-hmm. um, you know, technical difficulties. In other words, you, um, the mm-hmm. client and the practitioner aren't physically there. And so how do you know what's going on? you got this client that's in trance and you just lost connection. You know, mm-hmm. over the phone lines, computer lines, or what have you. It's just not a safe um, way. And I'd like to say if any listeners um, are aware that this may happen or they've heard about it, um, they need to call and let us know um, so we can do a follow up because Dolores said absolutely not. You know, and, you, and the you know, practitioner, MJ, I, I, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that's I. That's the most angry I've ever seen Dolores ever, is when people talked about doing sessions over Skype or long distance. I mean, just the fire in her eyes and, and shouting no. I mean, you didn't see Dolores Cannon get angry very often, but she really got angry about that mm-hmm. because she just didn't think it was caring enough for the client. There And there's many people out there, um, other hip, Gnosis practitioners who who do other kinds of method methods and who say it's perfectly fine and that the client would just go to sleep or whatever. But Dolores just cared too much about her clients and she cared too much about anybody who was exploring their mind with QHHT. You really need somebody there with you as your advocate and you know just keeping track of what's going on because all kinds of things can happen in a session. And having somebody there who's not in trance, um, it's just a good thing <laughs> to uh, to have somebody there sort of as your spotter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. at this so, point, right. we, we do mention that during a session, um, we do not allow family members or friends to be present 
during a session, it's the practitioner and the client only. Mm-hmm. So very, somebody very says, private. Well, yes. If somebody says, well, why don't we go ahead and do Skype and I'll sit here with mom in case something mm-hmm. happens. No, it doesn't work that way. It truly doesn't no. because our clients go to the deepest level um, that our brains um, can go without having anesthesia. And mm-hmm. that deep level requires monitoring, which that's what the practitioners do. We watch body signs. You know, we listen. Sometimes the client's voice gets very soft. And um, like we're right there next to the client. We don't touch the client, but we're right there. And like you said, an advocate, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Dolores would say, also, she said, you haven't seen um, the things that I have seen. And she's done thousands <laughs> and thousands and thousands of sessions. Mm-hmm. So here again, um, I think out of total respect, um, I believe what Dolores is saying, and I totally support, you know, not using Skype. It will never use Skype. So there you have it on my end. <laughs> And the idea of family, too, that that's tough because even couples or mothers and children who claim to be very close, even if you go to a practitioner in person, you still need to have your session one-on-one um, because mm-hmm. you, no matter how much you love a person in your family, if, if that's a family member, you're going to edit. And you need to not edit your information or your experience to get the most out of it. So it's definitely a one-on-one exploration. Um, let's go ahead and, and um, convey this, the um, story that Dolores um, talks about when she does training to practitioners. And it was, um, it was a man that was going to have the session. And his girlfriend came along and they drove, I don't know how many hours or they flew in, but anyway, mm-hmm. um, she came in and she sat down and and uh, Dolores explained to her that she could not be present um, even during the interview. She wouldn't even, you know, Dolores would not mm-hmm. start anything. And the um, the woman said, well, it doesn't matter. He's going to tell me everything that happens anyway, so what's the difference? And she said, no. This is one-on-one. It is very personal. And I guess there was a little debate there, but Dolores (laughs) stayed firm. And finally, um, the woman, you know, actually left in a huff because she didn't Mm -hmm. truly understand. And as soon as the woman um, left, the guy said, oh, I feel so relieved she won't be in here. He (laughs) says, I've got things I have to say, and I can't say them with her her there (laughs) so he didn't know how to tell his girlfriend you know couldn't be present Mm -hmm. and part of it and and things like that but with Dolores' help they got it across and he had a beautiful session he was able to say things and um, talk about things and um, get answers to um, different subject matters that um, the girlfriend would have just interjected and Interrupted. So it's getting back to what you said earlier about it's a very personal um, session, um, very private mm-hmm. session. And and we and do he, um, record it, but again, it's the client's property. So if they can share it if they choose to, and they do not have to share it. So mm-hmm. there you have it. And wouldn't you say, MJ, too, even if – even if – past the idea of of stories or information, when you have another human being of any kind um, present, their energy, their energetic field is part of the recipe of what's going on there. And it's just going to change something in some way. It's, It's like a science experiment. You know, it's if you take, you know, three things off of the shelf and put it into a beaker, it's going to be different than and if it's just two. And I think that sessions, they're just more pure that way when it's just the two people. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you've had this comment from your clients where they'll say, oh, I've never shared that in such and such <laughs> with anyone before. And it's mm-hmm. we build up a trust um, with mm-hmm. our clients. And um, there are so many personal things that are released and shared, and they say, gosh, that feels so good to say it out loud mm-hmm. or to tell somebody. And, you know, this is so non um, that they are totally relieved, just totally relieved. But, yes, and we give them the time to do that, don't we? Um, that's why these yeah. sessions take so long, too. In a, in the day and age where you have, you know, a 15-minute quite often um appointment with your primary care physician this is something completely completely different and we spend you know multiple hours with clients to build that rapport and to get you know to the bottom of of some things that really are important to look at before going into the consciousness and trying to unravel what's going on Dolores always has us talk about the client's early childhood, you know, their upbringing, et cetera. I have some clients who are a little surprised that we want to go back that far. They kind of look at me and, hmm, you know, you really want to know about my childhood? And yes, (laughs) yes, we do. That's a good point. Um, You know, the time, I tell people, you know, they'll say, well, how long does the session take? And I said, well, you know, if you want a ballpark average time, four to four and a half hours, depending, you know, it, but I said, it, you know, it can go eight hours. And people go, eight hours? I, You know, I can't, mm-hmm. I can't do this in eight hours. Um, <laughs> and it, no, every session is not eight hours. But what happens is um, we do an interview and, um, after the client comes in and, we sit down and, and interview um, where they share that, you know, childhood and what I call the family tree. And the family tree is like, you know, about their mother, father, grandfather, whatever relatives that, you know, are are players, so to speak, in their lives. All of those people play a role in the client's life path that they're on. And so with the client's questions, a lot of times they're associated with these key players in their lives. So that's the importance of gathering that information. And and um, I let clients know, I said, the more information that you're comfortable in sharing really helps me to facilitate your session because once mm-hmm. we get in, you know, to the trans part, I let clients know, I said, I can't wake you up and say, hey, What about Cousin Ruth over here? You didn't tell me about her. (laughs) (laughs) Something Mm -hmm. like that. Um, So, again, um, if, let's say, um, it would happen, though, that Ruth wasn't brought up in the interview part. Mm -hmm. And Ruth did come up in, in the session somehow. I wouldn't be startled as a practitioner. I would just start asking questions to really dig into um, what the connection is and all of that. So um, it's not, I don't want to have people think, oh, gosh, what if I forget to mention something? Yes. Actually, I have a a quick interesting story about that not very long ago at all. Just, um, Just last month I had a client whose primary Uh, concern was the relationship uh, between her uh, spouse and um, and and a religious figure in their community I mean she there was just there was drama there was uh, there was a lot of stuff going on in her mind between her her husband and this um, you know this clergyman and that was I mean that was one of the biggest focus of the of the session you know one of her prime reasons for coming for a session she wanted to understand what was going on what she felt about she had these very strong feelings about it and come to find out when 
we got into her session, her SC, her higher self said, you know what? This has nothing to do with her husband. It has nothing to do with the clergyman. But because of the relationship between the husband and clergyman, it reminded her of, and then it was exactly what you just said right there, MJ, of mm-hmm. I think it was a cousin and the cousin's husband, and she watched she watched a truly unfortunate um, set of circumstances happen between these two people, and she was seeing some similar things happening, and she really... Mm-hmm. Um, focused so much on it, and and it was so beautiful the way her um, SC, her higher self, came through and said, no, 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 the real pain, the real hurt has to do with these other two people. It's just reminding her of that. And you know what? I didn't hear about either one of those people in the session, but it was very easy to see how her mind went there and um, and then we were able to resolve it. It was such a relief to her at the end that she didn't have to worry about her husband and this clergyman. They really weren't the problem after all. Beautiful example. And that is happens, um, I, want, I don't want to say frequently, I don't want to um, put a label on it, but it does mm-hmm. happen, you know. <laughs> yeah. it, it does happen because, again, the, um, the client's higher self is directing this information. Mm-hmm. So what's coming through, um, you know, the client has a list of questions. In some sessions, um, those questions aren't as important as something else that the, their higher self is bringing through because what's brought through by that the client's higher self is that whole thing about, you know, what they need to know now, right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just get goosebumps about that because every session <laughs> mm-hmm. that I facilitate is different. I can't predict the outcome. I'm always um, wowed at the the answers that come through for the client um, mm-hmm. and the healing that takes place. And, yeah, it, it's... Oh, I just could have a session. <laughs> you know, I think really people different. would be amazed. They're really different. I, I like to tell people, you know, they're on a continuum. You know, I, just like anything, some people find this exploration fascinating and interesting, and um, some are sort of amused, and some people um, have things validated that they've been thinking of. Other people are completely surprised. Um, other people's jaws are on the floor and they can't stop blinking and saying, wow, afterwards. Um, some people are just very pleasantly and gently, um, again, validated is the best word I can put to um, to some of the sessions, you know, where where they just had some questions that, have been nagging them and and are they on the right path? And sometimes, you know, these sweet sessions with the SC, sometimes not with jaw-dropping miracles, just assurances, just sweet assurances that everything's fine, that they are on their right path, that they are uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing, that they're making the decisions that, um, you know, that their soul set up for them to, um, you know, to make or or coming into those um, storylines where where they have the opportunity for growth and challenges and and that they're doing fine and they get some pats on the back from their higher self. Sometimes those are some of the sweetest sessions. And then again, there's those just drop down, um, jaw dropping sessions where the amazing things happen and they say, "Can you believe that 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 just happened?" And and I have to nod. Yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen the, the yeah. miracles happen. I've seen the people take hearing aids out of, you know, out of their ears and throw them across the room. Uh, you know, other amazing things happen. And then sometimes it's just, it's just sweet, you know. Um, so it's mm-hmm. all along that line. And we we never know what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> I just um, think uh, we need to clarify these list of questions we've been talking about before we get sure. into the trance. 
Yeah, um, what kind of questions do people bring? Yeah, these questions that we keep, this list of questions that we ask the client to um, write out. Um, when um, I, in my practice, I like to do a very brief phone conversation um, before the client um, even sets an appointment time and that. And that is I help them prepare for their session and answer you know, some questions they may have about what's going to happen in that. Um, Mm -hmm. And when we get to the list of questions, I say to them that um, think of it as though you were sitting across a table and your higher self, who has all the knowledge about you, is sitting across from you. What would you ask your higher self? Mm Mm-hmm. And that seems to personalize it for them mm-hmm. and knowing that they can ask whatever question they're mm-hmm. they're wondering about, you know, and they will receive that an actually, answer. That actually brings up the point, MJ, because some people ask, can they ask the big questions? Can they ask questions about, you know, did Atlantis really exist? Um you know, uh, what's going on on uh, the moon, uh, you know, et cetera. Some big questions that don't have to deal with their own personal lives. Uh, what do you say when clients ask about bringing those types of questions to a session? I say bring it on. <laughs> the, I just embrace their questions and their inquiry minds. Um mm-hmm. I'm a facilitator. I'm not the gatekeeper of what can be asked or not asked. Um, So therefore, you know, if they want to ask about, you know, maybe current events that are happening in the world, specific things, Mm -hmm. you know, why not? Um, Mm -hmm. It's their, um, if it's important to them to ask a question, that's all that matters really. And that right. gets back to the individuality of the session and the purpose in that. Um, although, you know, like with everything, um, their higher self are not going to give them, you know, the winning lottery numbers. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, um, you know, the higher self is not going to give a specific, um, you know, when, what date am I going to die, those types mm-hmm. of um those types of things, but I've not had people ask about that anyway, but, um, you know, it's a possibility. Mm-hmm. That That's actually a, a great lead in to asking about the idea of the future. You know, a lot of people ask about things, you know, is this going to happen in the future? Is that going to happen in the future? Are those relevant questions to bring to a QHHT session? I think it is, and the reason is, um, from my perspective, is the client is seeking answers and looking at if they do A, B, C, what's the outcome going to be? What's that future going to be? In other words, um, the question might be, well, I've been thinking about moving to San Diego, you Mm -hmm. know, in the next six months. Is that something I should do? Or, Mm -hmm. you know, I've been looking at a new job or things like that. Or should I, you know, leave this current job and, you know, get into pottery or whatever. Those are (laughs) life path path questions. And Mm -hmm. the, I guess the response that usually comes through, and here again it's not a pat answer, but the SC responds in a guiding way. There's no definitive Mm -hmm. answers. Because, um, the well, what happens is the client still has free will. Yeah. And the client can choose to take on the advice that comes through in the session or they can just drop it and go, no, that's not going to work for me. So, again, And we see both things happen, don't we? We see both things happen. Yes, some, we do. Some people... Uh, take the suggestions for change and for, you know, moving into a different path and a different way of looking at life and, and 
monumental things can happen in their lives. And other people just kind of go back to the way things always were because we're creatures Mm -hmm. of habit, you know. If there's anything humans are is we do the same thing today pretty much that we did yesterday. And even people who have amazing sessions with lots of input, information, and healing, if they go back to... If they go back to everything that brought them to that point before, even with the changes that are made, they're going to slide back into that old life. So it, it's really mm-hmm. about making some you know, some fresh starts, some new changes. And, and not everybody is willing to do that. And, and that's what the free will part really means. You know, Dolores used to say that all the time too, especially people who are ill do you really want to get well? And, and you know, the general answer is, well, well, of course, doesn't everyone want to be healthy? And Dolores found out, she would teach us that, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but when they're ill, there's something in there, often, not always, but something in there in their life, there's something that um, they're benefiting in some way. And that benefit may not be obvious, but sometimes it is. And sometimes people aren't willing to give up that benefit. Maybe it's being cared for by their family. Maybe they feel like it's the only way they can be cared for by their family is if they manifest some sort of illness. And not not everything is like that, of course. It's Mm -hmm. just an example where she would try to think about, well, why why is this person experiencing you know, physical hardship. There's a lot of different reasons for that, for them to do that. And um, believe it or not, some people don't want to change their life enough to heal all the way. Mm-hmm. And we honor that as practitioners um, because we're here to um, assist um, this beautiful process um, but we're not here to um, demand or um, pressure the client into making any changes. That is totally up to the client, you know, how they want to mm-hmm. proceed um, down their life path. And and in essence, if a practitioner, you know, during the debriefing would say, well, you know, your SC said this, so I guess you better go on a, you know, an organic and diet and <laughs> lose this and do that. And if, mm-hmm. you know, if that happens, uh, run. Run as fast as you can because <laughs> that's not a QHHD session. Um, and right. where I'm going with that is that every client that we see, they're on a life journey. And they make decisions as they, you know, walk walk their path. And we're here as support, but we're not here to intervene or disrupt their path. And everybody's life path Mm -hmm. is about choice. Mm -hmm. It's all about choice, Mm -hmm. you know. And um, we can't always predict the outcome either. uh, So I tell people that want to that say, oh, but but I want to help. You know, my cousin Ruth, I really, I got to help her. I got to <laughs> help her. Well, actually, you're interfering, 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 thank you, with Ruth's path, with her life. Mm-hmm. You know, it comes out that maybe Ruth set up a life with a lot of complications because that's what her life contract was that she put together before she came into body. We don't know that. But mm-hmm. in, when, when you know, we have a session, we start finding out what all we put on our plate before we came into body. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's all individual. It is. Um, I think um, what kind of experiences maybe people have, we could probably do three hours on that. Oh um, gosh. Where people we go sure in could. the trance. <laughs> but we'll 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 do our best to give some um interesting um examples and 
Um, but I would at this point though I'd like to um maybe talk about what Dolores has said how QHHT sessions have have changed over the years that she's been she was do, conducting them and what's happening mm-hmm. now and um mm-hmm. chime in here. Um in the beginning <laughs> when she started out people mm-hmm. would go to quote unquote a past life um and it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Uh, one of the examples in Five Lives Remembered, her book, one of the uh, women um, went into a past life as a flapper in the 1920s, 30s. And um, nothing significant, but it all has a purpose. Well, that went on for a while, and then the next thing that happened was Dolores discovered she was really tapped into healing powers um, when she conducted a session. So then people, uh, some of the clients were going into the future. Some mm-hmm. people found out that they had a life as a rock or the wind or a tree or a dolphin, mm-hmm. you know, on and on and on. And then others find out that they're connected to um, extra um, terrestrial life. And they, you know, they're part of 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 a, of a certain group of, of um, such, or maybe they're just energy. So mm-hmm. it's really out of the box thinking of if people say, "Oh, yeah, I know all about past life regression." I go back and, you know, I was Tom Sawyer back when, and doing this and that, or you know, I was this inventor and yada yada yada. What we What we've seen in our practice um, over the last several years has has changed as well. Um, The higher consciousness um, really brings through um, not, well, brings through higher thinking, I guess, and um, not very mundane lives that, a client perhaps did experience, but what's brought through is a scenario where the client can learn about why they were a dolphin in one lifetime Mm -hmm. and what was that all about. So not only does the client find out, you know, what energy form they were, but the whole purpose and the meaning behind that because it's, you know, Um, We all know about the progression of Dolores, you know, would say each and every one of us, you know, has to go be everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we, in our lifetimes, over um, eons of of time, so to speak, we have to be everything because that's how we experience the world. I'm trying to remember, did you have someone that was a rock? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. You know, what I tell my clients is I've had many rocks. It it sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? it (laughs) I always laugh when I say that, and usually the clients will laugh as well. But it's true, and if you think about it, it, I mean, just take, take a typical life right now, the pace that most of us live, you know, on the clock and fitting so many tasks into a day. And, um, you know, the the days just fly by and there's more and more things to do. There's always something to do and something that's needing to get done and something that's waiting to get done. And some people come in for a session with their life kind of at that frenetic pace and their SC takes them right into to being a rock, which seems kind of crazy, except for if you think about it then, imagine being able to just be in one place, piece of that, and the, the ability to just watch things change around you in subtle ways in, in the in the timing and in the seasons and in 
um, yeah, lots of rocks. And, and many people who are too busy and too fast and too, you know, put too much on their plate find themselves experiencing that. And the SC takes them there and they can actually then um, truly add that sense of calm, stability, uh, you know, where things are going to be okay no matter what, even if they can't or don't find it possible for them to slow down in their lives. Believe it or not, if you go sit inside the consciousness of a rock for a little while, you can adopt a little bit of that that peace and stability and bring that into your life. <laughs> and that's kind of the way that works. Yes, it does. <laughs> And, again, that could be another hour to go more in yeah. depth because, you know, people that are new to perhaps this idea, um, there is so much meaning there um, about experiencing. Everything has energy. Everything in this 3D world has energy. And so a rock has energy. And we are, in essence, energy. So it's experiencing the different kinds of energy that um, manifest in a 3D world is what it's all about. Mm-hmm. And gets back to that observation of, and things. One of the most interesting, I got to actually meet this woman, believe it or not. One of the most interesting, I don't remember which convoluted book it was, but it was during um, the class that I took with Dolores back in 2008, July of 2008 in, in Fayetteville, Arkansas, uh, the woman was in the classroom. She'd actually had a session with Dolores, and her session was in one of um, one of the chapters in, in Dolores' convoluted series where she was a machine part. She was a piece of a machine. And... I think that can kind of stretch people's minds about about what this method can do to bring somebody into a place where they're experiencing what the consciousness of being, you know, a cog in a machine might possibly be. Mm-hmm. And it sounds so far out there, but it, it it's truly one of the more um, striking um, explorations I know for me thinking about this this method and the things that we can learn about themselves and, you know, things like teamwork and things like uh, appreciation for even an inanimate object. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Candace, kind of crazy. I know that I know you have a beautiful um, real experience with a client that you shared with the practitioners in our forum. And I think that is a great example. If you would share that, how, as practitioners, we keep digging and digging to get to um, so the client knows what they are, what they're experiencing. And what I'm referring to is the, I think it was a gentleman that he kept seeing darkness around him, darkness around him. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a good 30 minutes to help him through that darkness and if you would share that briefly, because I think the outcome is, uh, I think it's going to surprise people. Oh, my gosh. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going through the Rolodex of memories in in my head. Is this the one where I did the little video thing? Was it that one? I, there's a couple yes. that I'm thinking of right now. One, um, yes, he was... Um, he only saw, he, first he saw nothing and nothing, and then he seemed like he might have a little bit of color, and then he was moving through that. And, um, gosh, oh, oh, MJ, I think they're kind of mixing up in my head. Anyway, I know one one fellow was, and if it's not the right one, it's at least the same kind of, it's the same kind of session. One fellow ended up feeling himself being kind of contained and in darkness. And he, he was insisting that nothing was going on. But as we explored and explored just sensations, well, what are your impressions? One of the best words Dolores ever used. What are your impressions? And if you give them an impression, 
to think about, well, it seems tight, it seems dark. And the next thing you know, this person ended up being a seed. I mean, he was a seed and he was breaking through the the pod that was holding him, you know, in darkness and in this tight place. And when he finally felt himself burst out of it, going up through the ground and and moving towards the sunshine and becoming this live invigorating kind of plant, you know, reaching towards the sky and, and pushing his roots down. And, and of course it, it ended up being an amazing analogy with his own life, you know, the, that he, he was the potential, the potential was there for everything that he ever wanted to, uh, you know, all of the dreams that he could reach for and the roots that he wanted to put down with his family, etc. cetera. And, and that's another beautiful thing that the SC will do is, um, kind of orchestrate these experiences in this richly symbolic way to bring, you know, hope and um, direction and, and peace and balance in, in our clients' lives. And I don't know if it's the right one <laughs> you were well, mentioning, but I, it, I'm remembering the right that one, one right now. The one. <laughs> it's the right one for our purpose of helping people to understand um, mm-hmm what can happen, but I know you've had, you know, other um, sessions similar, but like you said, Mm -hmm. there's a commonality there of, um, I'm sure when you talk to the client in the interview, the client didn't say, oh, yeah, I knew I was a seed in the past life. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. You know? Absolutely no idea. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a practitioner, I, you know, I couldn't have guessed um, what that client was going to um, be experiencing, and mm-hmm. it's exciting as a pra- as a practitioner to um, 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 hear and discover along with the client what you know what they are experiencing during that part. So um, mm-hmm. that's great. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, future lives. Um, and that would be, um, Dolores also has taught us about we can do group regressions where we have a group of people get together and it, this is an experience that helps them kind of um, get acquainted with what it would be like in a light hypnotic state. And um, some people um, go to the future. We help them yeah. just... Um, kind of lay the groundwork there and, you know, people are seeing and describing buildings and people and that in some type of a community in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, So that can happen. It's out there. Mm -hmm. Their their higher self, their SC is uh, wanting them to know that and and it's important. But again, um, tell people that that is one that is only one possibility of future that mm-hmm. is not a definitive future so in other words um you know we don't live our life on that being the future because if right. we try to live our life and direct our life to that specific happening we're going to miss out on so many things that are that are happening right now in this moment mhm so mm-hmm. um, again, it's. Um, I think to kind of sum the experiences up, if people um, want to um, take some time and read any of Dolores's books, any of the convoluted universe uh, books, there are just tons and tons of sessions um, in there with information. Um, about various topics, and it's all true. You know, it's all valid information. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and you know what I they'll, like? They'll get a sampling those, of what ha- can happen. Those books can be, you know, daunting. They're they're quite big and thick, but most of Dolores's books, particularly the Convoluted series, their chapters. Each chapter is standalone. You you can just open mm-hmm. that you know, book up, and it's it's kind of like a collection of short stories. She does group them, of course, and she 
she talks about different subject matters and different theories that that come up with them but if they aren't books that you need to sit down and read from from cover to cover to make any sense you can just flip through them and um you know find find sessions to read about and that's a fun way actually of of reading some dwarfs books sometimes too is not from front from uh, front to yeah. back, but just uh, you know, pick it out and we'd see which one uh, pops up pops up for you if you want to read them. But um, yeah, they're quite easy to but, read. And, and I, I think, go ahead. I was going to say, I think it'd be helpful for our audience to know how Dolores accumulates that information and how she puts it into a book form. So when um, people are reading her books, they understand the kind of the backstory of how that information was put together. So in other words... Yeah, please share the, with us. Please do. The main thing to know when you're reading those books is Dolores' client, let's say his name was, uh, I don't know, John. And um, John's the client throughout and she weaves this um, chapter together, but it's not John as a sole client. Um, John represents accumulation, a uh, conglomerate, if you will, of hundreds of clients. And what Dolores does is, um, over the years and thousands of sessions, etc., what she does, she starts hearing information the same information comes through and she collects that information and she, her um, thinking is that it is valid information when it comes through time and time again through um, tons of clients and clients that are in different parts of the world and they don't even know one another. But this information Mm -hmm. comes through. So she pulls this information together and that's how these chapters are written in the book and that's why it's it's on a subject matter Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I wanted to let people know if you read a chapter and think oh I'm going to have a session like that um, Mm -hmm. just know that (laughs) um, it's an accumulation of information and she's bringing it together to provide people that reader books information about questions, universal questions, you know, that mm-hmm. are out there. So, mm-hmm. again, a person can start anywhere in her collections. And I'm going to go briefly on her books because um, the initial books, The Five Lives Remembered, um, it was close to 10 years before she even got that one published. And because the world wasn't ready, the publishers yep. didn't know what to do with that information. She was so far ahead of the curve. Um, new age wasn't even a term back then. So she, um, what's the word? Trailblazer. Um, that's this that's information the word for Dolores Cannon, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was ahead um, of her time. And then um, I'm going to fast forward a little book, a little to a book called um, Three Ways of Volunteers in the New Earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that is a, um, that'll just explode people's minds, really, in a good way, in a good way. Um, yeah, that was a seminal book. That changed so many people's yeah. lives. So many it people did. coming into my my office. Um, that book that book is just huge. She'll be known for that book. Yes, yeah. Um, and what the book is about, the three waves, is um, related to um, what was happening here on Earth um, right after around what 1944. 45-ish right in there when the atomic mm-hmm. bomb was um, could have destroyed the earth and and um, our watchers, our guardians could not interfere and but they had to come up with something 
to, you know, help us get away from destroying the earth. And so the call went out, as Dolores said, uh, for volunteers to come in and help bring light to the planet. And uh, so the first volunteers to come in were first waivers, and um, they, they're they pioneers in and of themselves. A lot of them had not been in, in physical body prior to that call that went out that came into physical body at that time. And then the next wave that came in was, well, maybe 20 years or no, a little bit more maybe, um, later, and that's the second wave, and those people came in to hold light and to just um, bring calmness and balance. And then the third wave is basically all the the children that are coming in, Mm -hmm. you know, they have their gifts, they're aware of them, they see the world very differently. They're here to change the world and be our teachers. So Mm -hmm. that's a real quick um, synopsis. And then um, then that book goes on to what the new earth is all about, the new earth and the old earth, and how that looks. And so through a QHHT session is probably the best way to figure out which gear one of the waves, you know, first, second, or third. And... I'm a first waiver, so um, there you have it. Um, I didn't even know what the term was. I didn't even know what Mm -hmm. it was. But, Mm -hmm. again, somehow I met Dolores and I had a session, and that's how I discovered that. So, And then I read the um, three ways of volunteers. I thought it was somebody, the universe just handed me a manual about life. Right. That's how I read that book. It everything yep. made sense. Everything. Yep. So many people say that. So many people, even people who haven't read the book, who've just watched Dolores talk about them, uh, about this book and some of these concepts in some of her YouTube videos, will say that they felt like she was talking just to them, and uh, yes. and how important it was that. Um, that that book was written. Quite quite an important piece of work. Absolutely. So Dolores has led quite a left quite a legacy. Like you mentioned, there are some umpteen uh, YouTube videos um, that <laughs> some of them are up to two hours, and mm-hmm. I listen to them. I go back and re-listen. Seems like um, her message just has so many meat so much knowledge in them, and it's all valid, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and I can't say enough about that, Um, and then all of her books and uh, Convoluted Five just came out, Um, Mm -hmm. she had the book just about ready to go to the publisher, and her daughter um, finalized it, and it just came out within the last month. So mm-hmm. Brand there's new. a couple more books <laughs> that are in the queue that um, Dolores, you know, she would always tell us in when we w- when we would go to our reunion or conference or training, and she'd go, "Oh yeah, I'm writing books all the time. I've got three or four going at any one time." <laughs> <laughs> and so mm-hmm. here you go. Uh, even though she's left the physical. There's manuscripts that are sitting there waiting to be published. So if people are wanting to know if um, how many books, well, she's still writing them. So there yep. you have it. There's still piles and piles of information um, on her desk and around her house. I was blessed to be able to see some of those. It was quite stunning. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the books may be still coming. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, I, um, one of the things I think that's important to mention is is just how simple and elegant Dolores' method was. There are people out there, uh, other healers, other people doing other kinds of hypnosis or energy or other kinds of methods, and, and so many are valid. And Dolores was so humble in this way. She would say there's a lot of different ways to get healing and um, information and miracles 
um, to manifest. QHHT is just just another way, but it was her way. But yeah. what I'd like to mention is just how down to earth and really uh, supremely and elegantly simple her method is. It, there there aren't a lot of hoops to jump through. It, it, it's not very complex. Uh, in the end, it, you know, you if you look back at, at at the parts of the session and how we bring clients to to view these, you know, parts of their consciousness and and things about themselves, it's really very elegantly simple and direct. And and her books are written in the same way, in a very down to earth way. Even though she's talking about ETs sometimes and uh, mm-hmm. and and other things that you know, can bend some people's minds. Really, her method is is beautiful and simple and accessible. And those of us who are practicing, um, you know, within the um, her legacy, you know, that that she left to us, are are quite aware of that. And and we we lovingly replicate that simplicity and that elegance. And we invite our clients to have their own adventures and, and find their own answers in, you know, in the mystery that is their own consciousness and in, in their own mind. I always say you, you need to be Indiana Jones in, in your own head, right? <laughs> you just yes. you kind of need yes. to go there. Actually, that brings me to a question. MJ, what do you say to people when they say, you know, I'm afraid if I go and have a session, I'm afraid I'll just, I'll just make it up. I'll just uh, I'll make it up and it won't be real. How do you answer that question? Well, depends on their imagination. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dolores would say, if you were going to make this up, is this the information you would have to make up? <laughs> mm-hmm. And and what she was saying was is um to believing and trusting in oneself and not trying to judge the information or quantify it, you know, analyze it, et cetera, et cetera. The information that comes through is from that person. And Mm -hmm. that person's higher self is bringing forth messages. Um, But some people say, oh, yeah, I made it up. And Dolores would say... You know, some of her clients would say, oh, I just made it all up and, and, you know, walk out after the session. Well, that's what they believed and that's what they believed. Um, But it doesn't, a session isn't really conducted in the left side of the brain where we analyze everything and line everything up. We tap into the right side of the brain where the imagination plays. And Mm -hmm. it's, unlimited possibilities. So in other Mm -hmm. words, you know, if we're trying to stay in the left side of our brain and come up with, you know, specific sequential detailed information, then that's all it is. It's probably made up and pushing. But if you allow yourself to the right side and have a connection with the higher self, just open your mind, and whatever comes through comes through. And you can pick it apart, you know, next day or whatever you want to. Um, but allowing yourself to be playful and free is um, so important because this mm-hmm. is where we get into people that that um, they say, you know, they. We we have them in trance, but they won't allow themselves to relax and allow the flow, and they'll say, oh, I think I'm still awake, you know, or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. And what can happen sometimes is that their everyday conscious mind starts, you know, wanting to take things over and prevent mm-hmm. connection. And as practitioners, we have been taught how to, you know, to manage that situation as well and to allow that connection. Um, unfortunately, there are people that want to be in control of their world, what happens in a session, everything. 
And a lot of that control perhaps is shutting doors and they're not ready for answers. And they may not want to admit that. And that's fine. And that can Mm -hmm. happen. And there's other people that, you know, just say, well, let's just see what happens. I'm just going to enjoy it. And that's the best way, isn't it? That's the best way to show up for one of these sessions. Is to think of it as an opportunity and an adventure and, and not, you know, Dolores would say this. Dolores would say 90% of what happens in a session is up to the client. Yes. And sometimes I will have clients look at me and kind of blink. Um, but I love that quote of Dolores because this really, you know, we're the facilitator and we are the guide and we will do everything in our power to provide a safe place and a safe platform and with this amazing method of Dolores to take you there. But you have free will and you've got to want to go there. And sometimes when people ask me or make that uh, statement about making it up, I think I've been finding myself lately, MJ, saying, yes, you made it up. You've made everything up. You've made up your entire <laughs> life, even up until yeah. now. Every Everything is made up. This table is made mm-hmm. up. Somebody thought about this table, and they made it up in their head, and then they drew a picture, and then here it is. You know, yes, that is a made-up table right there. Everything is made up. Everything. Mm-hmm. I kind of like you that. You create idea. your own reality. You know, yeah, if you want to control level, your reality yeah. to look at, you know, a certain way and function a certain way, then that is your reality. That's what your life is. So, yeah. I think before we start taking questions, we do need to talk about the healing component, which oh, yeah, is a that. cornerstone mm-hmm. of um, a session. Um, Dolores, when she was developing the method, um she discovered that she was tapping into the higher power and it offered healing. And she said, you know, after a couple of years or whatever the time frame was, she started looking back on clients and she said, you know, she says, I discovered that the healing power was always there. Mm-hmm. I just didn't recognize it right away. And then she mm-hmm. would talk about how, you know, the the higher power she was working with would continually feed her bits of information um, because she couldn't handle everything she said. Um, <laughs> you know, the human brain can't process it all. But anyway, um, let's get back to the healing. Um, once we get into the deeper level of trance, there is a healing component and... Uh, we ask for a body scan of the client. Again, we're not touching the client at all. Um, and we can also identify uh, key areas that the client has shared with us in the interview, you know, um, illnesses or aches, pains, or whatever their their physical body is experiencing. And um, that's usually part of those list of questions. And what will happen is the subconscious, the higher self here, will be doing the body scan and we can still talk and ask questions. And we can even ask, you know, how's the scan going? Where are you at? And the response will be, oh my gosh, you know, you know, we're in her chest and um, there's so, you know, her heart has been blocked you know, protected. Mm -hmm. There's a seal, you know, a coat of armor around it or something like that. So it's very interesting to hear how they do um, go through the body and how they start to break up um, congestion and, and describe what part of the body they're working on. Um, I know (laughs) there was one client, they were in the brain. They said, Oh my God, there's so much clutter here. It's so disorganized. (laughs) <laughs> no wonder she's not thinking clearly, you know, and they describe the process of cleaning that out and um, there's no harm that comes to the client, you know, they don't, um, it's not like um, an open wound and they're screaming, no, 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 no. Um, the healing is um, 
profound, but it's it's not sensationalized, so to speak. Um, and if the client has not identified anything, that's fine. We still ask for a, a healing scan to take place. And the mm-hmm. other thing that, that we've discovered is that the higher power that we're working with a lot of times we'll discover a certain area of the body that the client's not even aware of that's having mm-hmm. difficulty. And mm-hmm. this higher power goes in and, and heals it. Um, mm-hmm. Now, fast forward to the debriefing and aftermath. If the client says, oh, no, I don't believe any of that and they can't fix it and whatever, the client has now disregarded that healing for themselves yeah. through choice. Yeah. So, again, it gets back to free will. But, mm-hmm. you know, some of the healing that has taken place is... And the, and there's um, explanations of, you know, why the client is having certain physical symptoms because mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. that's physical um, in a disease process is either a symptom or a process and it's a message from my higher self that's trying to come through to get our attention. And there's books mm-hmm. out there about, you know, certain disease processes that um like thyroid would be, you know, not speaking your truth and standing up for yourself. Scoliosis would be, you know, the fear of of um being judged and not standing up for themselves. Um kidney um, problems can be holding on to things. Digestive problems can be holding on to things. I mean, it just it makes sense. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure it out, but mm-hmm. everything has a purpose and a meaning. Um, very quickly, I will mention a client that um, she had uh, heavy metals in her body. And when we went through the scanning, um, what she told me afterwards was um, when the scanning occurred, she could feel this wave of energy going down her body from the top mm-hmm. of her head, all just a wave of energy until it got to her ankles. And it stopped. And they, the answer that came through during trance was they would relieve and take out as much heavy metals as possible, but they were leaving just a little bit as a reminder, and that had a purpose in her life. And hmm. uh, a couple of days after her session, she called me and said, oh, I'm just, I don't know what to do. My body is itching. It's it's broke out. It's just itching. She said, I can't even stand to have clothes on. And uh, so we talked about it, and it what was happening was, the body was excreting the heavy metal. So oh, wow. it manifested in a physical way. Mm-hmm. And she decided to take some Benadryl for the itching. But um, it was a very interesting uh, process for her. Uh, she wasn't harmed or you know, mm-hmm. um, hurt in any way, but there is a manifestation that can occur in the body itself to let the person know that these toxins are being flushed out, being relieved. Um, sometimes, and say you, um, you, go ahead. I, I was going to say, you mentioned scoliosis. Uh, brought to mind a, a, a woman who uh, came and had um, issues with that in her own body, and her daughter did, and also her mother did, and what I wanted to just mention was that we always ask, what's the root cause of any physical problems? What's the root cause? And sometimes it's very obvious and the root cause is something going on in the present lifetime. And then sometimes it's it's other lifetimes, which is how this whole healing method of past life regression even, you know, came to be. But mm-hmm. This particular session was so beautiful and so amazing, and Dolores has a couple scoliosis sessions that are amazing to talk about too. But this woman actually went back to a life in Ireland where um, she and her family 
were really persecuted by the, um, the Catholic Church there at that time. And her higher self, her SC, told her that her scoliosis was a manifestation um, for her and, and through her ancestral line, so for her daughter and for her um, mother and others, um, about bending to the will of the Catholic Church. That's just, you know, absolutely matches what you said before about scoliosis, not standing up for yourself. And so it was the story, it was this story of this family and this, you know, this piece of history that just carried on into this woman experiencing this, you know, in the 21st century here in America, far removed from either of those stories. It just, that story stayed in her DNA, it stayed in her family line. And once the story was uncovered, she could release it. And she left without any pain and standing up straighter. These are the amazing yeah. things that are available to people who have sessions. Well, we have some wonderful stories about some of our practitioners that have had a session with Dolores and miracles um, that have happened. People come in with oxygen and just a whole list, you know, of health problems. Um, you know, their medical records probably, you know, five inches thick, I don't know, but just very severe, um, life-threatening work to the point where the doctors say, you know, we can't do anything else for you. Um, Mm -hmm. We've done everything, you know, we can do palliative care. In other words, you know, we try to keep you comfortable, but we can't Mm -hmm. do anything else. And, um, Mm -hmm. well, you know, Laura, one of our practitioners, Mm -hmm. her session with Dolores is she walked in with oxygen and um, difficulty walking, breathing, coughing, lung problems, um, the whole nine yards. She had and multiple organ failure. Yes, yes. Yep, and uh, she came out without oxygen, and and uh, she's living, she got her life back, let's put it that way, and was told she has work to do. She's got a purpose mm-hmm. here, and she is currently a QHHT practitioner and she's in Oklahoma. Yes, she and she's is. Very, she'll share her story. Um it's it's just beautiful. Um but she's we've a had other, soul. other Yeah. So it's it's there for the taking, so to speak. <laughs> um MJ if you let me in let me interrupt you want it. Let me interrupt you just by um, offering our call-in number to anyone who may be listening who might have questions. The chat room's been really quiet. There's really uh, no questions coming up there, but I'd like to invite anyone who might want to call in and ask questions about QHHT and uh, what they may um, have questions about sessions that we haven't answered so far. Uh, The call-in number is area code 646-716-8890. That's 646-716-8890. Or you can log into the chat room and type out a question there. MJ and I would be happy to tackle those. We could talk about QHHT all night and and into uh, next week easily, <laughs> but if you have <laughs> questions, we'd be we'd be happy to take them. MJ, I I would love to hear um, questions from listeners um, because there's that's that individuality. What do people want to mm-hmm. know? What questions do they have? Mm-hmm. Um, what's important to them? Um, that that's a big part of all of this too. I mean, yes, we can give information, we can share stories, et cetera. But boy, that that connection with um, potential clients or or clients that um, have um, have had a session and, and a good experience, we'd love to hear from you as well. Mm-hmm. Ah, there's a question here. Um, how long is a QHHT session? Um, mm-hmm. 
I think we talked about that early on, but we'll go ahead and, and respond. That being, um, an average time is around four to four and a half hours, and that's average. And how that breaks down in itself is the interview process where the client is sharing the information, as we defined earlier. Um, that can be an average of an hour and a half to two hours. Now, again, that's mm-hmm. an average. It's very individual. Um, once we go into trance, um, Dolores' guidelines for us have been a maximum of two hours. Now, there are exceptions to that. And somebody may say, well, my God, two hours, that's a long time. But <laughs> we always ask clients after they come out of trance, well, how long do you think you're under? And the clients will say, oh, 20 minutes, maybe half hour. <laughs> and we'll mm-hmm. say, well, it's been, you know, an hour and 50 minutes or two hours. And, and they're, you know, jaw drop because um, there is no time, really, um, once you get into to the trans component. So then after um, bringing the client safely out of trance, then there's a debriefing time. And again, that can be anywhere from um, 30 minutes to another hour to whatever. So it's um, really up to the client and what they need that particular session. And uh, for me, I only book one session a day. I don't do back-to-back, you know, a morning time and an afternoon time and I've had people say, well, can't you squeeze me in? I go, no. And I explain <laughs> to them that I devote that day and that session to to a client, and it's based mm-hmm. on their need. Mm-hmm. There mm-hmm. there you have it. How about um, your MJ, session? how would you uh, – excuse me? I was going to say, can you add to that time frame with sessions oh, gosh. for your client? Oh, um, Yes, for me, uh, uh, my sessions tend to go a little longer. For, I, I don't know. I would say for me, you know, mine, mine probably average five and a half um, mm-hmm. hours or so. I'm not sure why. Uh, although I have to say a, a couple, three lately have been very efficient, shall we say, and quite spectacular in in the healing department. As a matter of fact, I guess that kind of brings me to um, a point, which is in the the structure of a QHHT session, in general, the client has some sort of experience. And then when they're finished viewing this experience or having this experience, we speak to the higher power or the SC that MJ has been talking about. during the show. But every once in a while we have a client who whose SC deems it um, unnecessary for them to have an experience of any kind, really, like a past life or a future life or life as a rock or anything like that. And they just go straight to the healing, straight to the question. And that really mm-hmm. does minimize the time that one needs to be in trance to some of the answers to these questions or to kind of set the set the stage for the SC to come through to answer some of these questions. So we do have those kinds of sessions sometimes. And they are very efficient and can be very powerful and um, somewhat shorter than regular sessions. And, I, and there's more of those happening these days. Some people say humanity is just ready for that. You know, these kinds of sessions didn't really happen with Dolores early on, and they may have been sprinkled through throughout the years. And I think if you gather a group of QHHT practitioners in a room, you would find that as we discussed sessions, we probably have more of those these days. Yeah, I would agree. Um, on my website, I, you know, just try to give time frames, but I struggled with even putting time frames on there, but <laughs> people that you know want to know you know a little bit more detailed um i I just put ranges on there, but sure you're right it it's 
this um, process is so individual that we could be with a client, you know, for four hours or, you know, we've had some practitioners that are with their clients eight hours. Mm -hmm. And some people probably would pass out thinking, I couldn't be with anybody for eight hours. (laughs) Well, that... (laughs) The time just goes because people start venting and they want to know and that whole Mm -hmm. interview process and the debriefing um, takes on its own time frame. And we just allow whatever's needed. And Mm -hmm. like you said, some people, um, it's short, but the quality is still there. Mm -hmm. And it's all about the client and what they need. Yeah. MJ, how would you um, talk to our listeners about um, the process of choosing a practitioner to go see? How would you talk to them about that? There's there's different labels and qualifications and levels of, of training, and some of that has brought a little bit of confusion to people out there. How would you answer that question? What what do those mean, and, and how do you find the right practitioner for you? Well, I think it's an equivalent of how do you find a doctor or a dentist, um, you know, any type of professional. Do your homework. Um, Dolores' website um, has a list of practitioners all over the world, and their contact information. So, you know, find someone in your area and then give them a call and talk to them. Um, also on the website, it it also identifies, you know, if you've had level one or level two training, um, which at least gives you that piece of information. But getting on the phone and talking with the practitioner and um, seeing and feeling and listening, is this a good match? Do you feel a good match with this practitioner? Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, um, you can ask around in your community. You know, Mm -hmm. someone might have had a session or or know that person. So, um, but how people find us are are interesting in and of its way, too. (laughs) I've had clients say, I don't know what it was, but I was directed to you. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about a guidance. And so I go, okay. You know, and they follow that guidance or they follow their gut. Um, I think that's the the best way. It's like, you know, for a doctor Mm -hmm. or dentist, I go and look at their bio, go to their website, you know, do the logistics of it, and then... um, go from there. But I think talking to the practitioner after you've done that background um, check, so to speak, and get that information, um, see if it's a fit. You know? Mm -hmm. You can get a lot of um, you can get a lot of information out of just looking at someone's photograph and seeing how they describe themselves. Um, you know, you can get a real sense of people that way, but I'm with MJ, you know, pick up the phone, um, talk to them live if possible and, um, you know, get a sense of their energy over the phone and see if you're a match because there may be something about that person that doesn't quite sit right with you. And if that's the case, you know, in your, in your gut, you feel that, well, listen to your gut, you know, maybe there's somebody else out there, um, but I, I did want to mention that even the level one practitioners, uh, those who've taken Dolores' class have all of the tools to bring you to a place of discovering the answers that, you know, that you're looking for. And sometimes people will say, well, I need to see a level three practitioner because, you know, I've got this very serious illness. And I always have to say, you know, it just really doesn't work that way. It just really doesn't work that way. Um, Yes, a level three practitioner um, has definitely been through more training. They've had more experience. They've, they, you know, they've, they've been through um, more evaluations, et cetera. 
They, they probably have more stories to tell, but it really doesn't work that way. Dolores's method is so pure, so brilliant, so amazing. Some of the, the most spectacular healings and the, some of the best stories that I've ever heard from others who've had a session have been from students who've practiced on each other for the very first time in a hotel room. And I just want to make sure that everyone out there knows that. Um, as long as the person has a huge heart and as long as they practice Dolores's method with great integrity, um, they can lead you into um, the place where you can access that part of yourself to heal yourself and find your own answers. Very true. It's, um, again, using the other professional analogy, someone can have credentials, you know, like a long Santa list, but then Mm -hmm. you pick up the phone or you meet them in person, you go, oh, my goodness, this isn't going to work for me. (laughs) Right. So you have to um, take everything into consideration. Again, you know, the higher self is, helping you and guiding you along the way. So when one of my clients drove about four hours to get to my location, and I know um, geographically there were many practitioners along the way, but he said, mm-hmm. I was I was supposed to see you. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, there was no other information other than... So he was listening to his inner guidance, and however he made the choice, that's how that happened. Mm -hmm. It it has nothing to do with the plus or minuses of any practitioner, you know, within that driving time that, that he could have seen. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the he made a decision based on an inner guidance system, and he trusted Mm -hmm. it. And Mm -hmm. so that's where that's at. Very good. Um, Trust your gut. How about about that recording that we send home um, with the clients, MJ? Can you you tell um, our listeners how uh, how important that recording is, the digital recording of their session? Okay. Um, Very important. it is additional healing opportunity. Um, let's define what the recording is. Once the mm-hmm. client is in trance and um, we get to um, the part about we're going back to uh, you know an important time and date and, and then that information starts coming through um, the client with information, we start recording then. Um, and then we close out as we bring the client out. So the recording is not about the interview process of all the information they shared. The Mm -hmm. recording is the interaction the client is having with their higher self um, and the responses and the questions that are are taking place. So what happens is after we bring the client out and we do a short debriefing, the clients may think they remember everything a little bit <laughs> or nothing at all. It varies. Mm-hmm. It truly mm-hmm. varies. And some clients will say, oh, yeah, I remember everything. I think I was even awake, yada, yada, yada. Well, they go home and then they decide to listen to their recording and they will find that every time they listen to the recording, they will hear um, information that triggers um, thinking or healing that gone before, and the best example I can give is um, myself. I still listen to my previous session, and sometimes I feel like was I even there? <laughs> In other words, there's new information coming through, but I was there. You yeah. know? Yeah. but it's 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 that power of information from the higher self that comes through and it triggers different thinking based on, Mm -hmm. you know, today. What do I need to hear from it today? Mm -hmm. And um, 
that's the power of it. And um, mm-hmm. we send those out um, in various ways. You know, we can do put it on a CD. We can send it by email, you know, for MP3 listening. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, again, it's uh, confidential. It only goes to the client. And um, it's, you know, there's for the utilization of additional healing and um, answers. And some clients um, listen to it to fall asleep and just allow Mm -hmm. that recording to continue. And healing still happens. You know, that information is still flowing through. So that's the power of that uh, recording. Um, The flip side, um, I had a client... um, Recently, this was interesting. Um, she, I told her her recording was ready, and she sent me a request. She says, "No, I'm not ready to listen to it. Just keep it." <laughs> and I thought, "Oh, mm-hmm. um, okay." Um, so it's ready when she's ready, but I'm not going to judge it. It's not my decision. But I, I thought that was a little interesting. Um, that is, that is say, interesting. I will say this particular client um, had some very obvious control issues, and she mm-hmm. was aware of them. But you can see where this might play out, where mm-hmm. she's not quite ready, but that's her decision. Mm. It is her decision. I I like to tell clients that, that they had just had an adventure, but the adventure really doesn't have to stop that day. Um, Mm -hmm. And that listening to uh, the session can help deepen it. And and I like to say too, because we're all busy people. So I like to say, you know, make some time, carve out some time to listen to it actively where you're really not doing much of anything else. You're really listening to it. You'll be surprised what you miss. Like MJ said, some, you'll hear things that you might not have allowed yourself to absorb the first time around. But then the recording becomes something, just like MJ said before, um, something that you might listen to sort of subliminally. Because when your consciousness hears some of that, it it truly builds you know, the neural pathways in your brain so that you have the the chance, the ability to go down that new path and to sustain the healing rather than go back to the person that you were before you walked through the doors to have your session. And um, so listening to your session is really important. But it's, and, and MJ, you're a nurse, so you know this, um, you know, patient compliance, right? Um, there's this thing, you know, people, <laughs> you know, you need to brush your teeth, you need to take your vitamins, you need to do your exercise, you need to, you know, compliance. And and there's um, there's compliance issues with QHHT as well. You know, uh, the SC may have very direct advice about, um, you know, I think you need to end this relationship. You need to remove this from your diet. You need to do this. You need to do that. And um, but free will comes in there, and it's just like mm-hmm. anything. And the people will go home, and they'll either, um, you know, decide to uh, to end that relationship and change that thing in their diet, or make uh, other changes in their lives, or not. And some people kind of shrug their shoulders and and don't don't take the advice of their higher self, even if they've traveled. Even if they, you know, spent an entire day with a practitioner, there are people out there who will just um, decide not to make those changes in their life. And that's always surprised me a little bit. Um, But then again, when you think of human nature, not so much, because we really are creatures of habit. And, um, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But sometimes I think... um, if they would really just take quiet time and think, well, why did I even want a session? 
mm-hmm. what drove me to have a session? You know, kind of come full circle. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, well, I had a session because blah, 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 blah. And a lot of them will be in their list of questions. And so they'll get the answer. So why not take advantage of um, mm-hmm. a game plan, so to speak, that they, their higher self gave during the session? Mm-hmm. You know, even try it and see what's mm-hmm. the worst that can happen kind of thing. But, um, again, respectfully, it is still free will and their decision. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I think it's good to to uh, remind people as well, uh, potential clients, that um, QHHT sessions are not set up for, you know, a weekly session for the next four to six mm-hmm. weeks. That's not right. how this rolls out. Um, <laughs> this session, we may never see our clients again for another session. Or it may be, you know, a time frame where they're ready and they want more. Call mm-hmm. up, you know, for another session. But Dolores, I don't know, you know, she'll say, most, she said, I, you know, I never see my clients again. Mm-hmm. They come in for their session, they get what they need, and... That's it. So that's, mm-hmm. you know, a different thinking as well. Um, and we don't go after the client and, and do checkup calls, you know, like, well, how are things going? And did you do this mm-hmm. and that? No, we're we're not. That's not how it works either. We love to hear from our clients. We love mm-hmm. to give feedback. But, again, it's their choice. We're not going to dog them um, mm-hmm. to do a follow-up. Um, Mm-hmm. Unless they say, you know, I've had clients say, well, MJ, will you give me a call in a couple of weeks? Or they'll say, I'll call <laughs> you in a couple mm-hmm. weeks. And that's mm-hmm. always um, a great, because it's nice to see, uh, you know, how people have made choices after a session and how their life has changed. Those beautiful mm-hmm. stories, you know. Um, yeah. They really are great stories. I have a yeah. I have a good story from and I've been, I, I'm not seeing any questions on, um, in the chat room or in the in the phone queue just yet. So I want to remind everyone um, we're to the place where we are going to take some questions or we're going to wrap up pretty soon. But uh, I'll remind the listeners of the call in number again. It is area code six four six seven one six eight eight nine zero. That's six four six. Seven one six eight eight nine zero. In case anyone has any questions, but um, I thought you might like this story, um, MJ. I had a client just a couple weeks ago, and she had an amazing session. She knew a little bit about Dolores. She was a fairly traditional. Um, she was a counselor herself, um, trained in hypnotherapy. Said she's not ever been able to be. Um, hypnotized by colleagues, which is <laughs> always an interesting way of going into a session, thinking, well, okay, we'll see what happens. But she she was beautifully relaxed and had an, an amazing uh, couple experiences. She, her first experience, she uh, found herself to be an, a Native American type of um, person, Oh, watching strangers come ashore, et cetera. And we explored a little bit of that lifetime. And then she did what we sometimes call leapfrogging. She she leapfrogged into uh, another life where she was in the water. At first, she didn't even know where she was. She thought she was in the sky. And um, she said she saw clouds, but nothing like she knew were to be clouds. She was trying to figure out where she was. And I asked her if she could move and and she was moving and then suddenly she hit the surface of the water and then she realized, oh, I'm in the water. And she turned around and she saw a fish. She was like, oh, there's a fish behind me. And she was, well, the next thing you knew, um, you could tell that she was a mermaid. Uh, I was asking her to describe her body and she was describing it. But she would never say the word mermaid. I mean, she was so stunned by this fact. And she actually, her the, the last day of her life, 
she was caught by humans in a net and they brought her up into the boat and it was awful and she ended up um, dying. That was That's how she passed away. And she came out of the session and it's so, the SC so brilliantly told her why it showed her these two different lives and how it played into into her world. And um, it was fascinating because um, during the debrief, she was fine with the Native American life, but the part about being a mermaid, she just was stunned. She, she really was kind of like in denial. She Her belief system was fine with the idea of past lives, but she really, even though she was aware of Dolores, this idea of being a mermaid was just really almost a little bit too much. She couldn't even really say the word mermaid, but that's certainly what she was. And and she was kind of questioning whether or not that could be real. And, you know, I did what what we all do. We talked about how it applied to her life, and it beautifully did. She loved swimming and some other things. But here's the here's the part that I really like. So she drove herself home, and that evening she was sitting on the deck with her husband and talking a little bit about the session and um, just still very mesmerized by the whole thing. And MJ, this big, beautiful red cardinal flies in from the trees nearby and lands on the deck railing with, you know, within a couple feet of her and her husband and just starts singing to them. She says that she's never seen a cardinal do that ever in her life. It, it just stayed there singing. She said it, it was like three or four minutes of pure singing, very, very close to her and her husband. Her husband was stunned as well, but this cardinal, cardinals are usually pretty shy birds would come that close and sing um, just this beautiful song, kind of looking back and forth between them. And and she emailed me to told me that. And, of course, I'm giggling and gleeful about this story because I know exactly what that was. (laughs) She Mm -hmm. said, was that a coincidence? What was that? I said, I know exactly what that was. What would you say that was, MJ? Well, now you're getting into how Dolores is still working with people around the world and practitioners, and a cardinal mm-hmm. is her kind of her icon since she left. Yes, yeah. has shown up in various places. Um, yeah, where you wouldn't expect a cardinal to be. Mm-hmm. So that is beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. That leads me into. Um, what type of beings might show up um, figuratively during a session? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, since Dolores has transitioned from the physical, um, Dolores has come through sessions. Um, mm-hmm. And clients don't even know Dolores. <laughs> but Dolores and the SC work together and she comes through and she'll have messages uh, for the client and sometimes the practitioner. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just kind of knocks your socks off how our mentor <laughs> is still working hard um, from, you know, the other side of the veil, so to speak. Now, that mm-hmm. might blow people's minds and go, oh, you know, but it's real. Um, when Dolores transitioned, there, there was... Um, practitioners um, sharing stories all over the globe how Dolores was um, became part of the sessions that they were doing. And mm-hmm. it just gives you goosebumps thinking um, what that's all about. Um, I've had Dolores come through a session and I let people know, you know, when we do the interview, to let them know, I said, this is what Dolores is doing since she transitioned. And, um, you know, if you're willing and you want to allow Dolores to come through and, you know, give any information, that you can do that, but only with your permission. And most of them are like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. 
but they don't know her. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, Dolores mm-hmm. doesn't take over the session or anything like that, but um, at some point, it there's um, a time frame where, where she'll come through with a message, and it's a beautiful yeah. message of sorts. Um, the other thing that can happen is a loved one that has passed will come through with a message for the client. Yeah. And they're, wor- they're, they're all working with the higher power, the higher consciousness of the client. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's I've seen emotional healing um, happen when that, that comes through. Um, a mother comes through, you know, the client is an adult son. You know, it's mm-hmm. very powerful, very, very powerful. I've also had animals come through, mm-hmm. and nothing was said in the interview, um, no request, nothing, but the animal comes through with the message, and that's a beautiful healing moment as well. Mm-hmm. So there's so many uh, possibilities um, when we open um, to that higher power. It, it, it's just so beautiful. So beautiful. It really is. Um, it really is beautiful enough. work. And, <laughs> and I, you know, I've been doing this uh, for more than seven years. Um, next, you know, when I finish out this year and go into next, I'll be in, into the eighth year. And it's still such fascinating work, and it's so gratifying. And it's always changing, and it's it's amazing, and um, and the 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 potential for discovery and healing is is extraordinary. You know, you you just mentioned animals, and we didn't say this before, but when we talked about the surrogate healing um, in our own family, we've had uh, amazing healings of of animals doing sessions, um, you know, between two humans, asking for and aligning with and watching healing happen for, you know, our companion animals. The potentials, the the various things that can happen in these sessions are just astounding. And more and more of the veil is thinning. You know, our abilities are increasing and We've been told that one of the reasons that, you know, Dolores made her exit at this time was because of humanity being poised at this juncture in our evolution where we're reaching for more abilities and more possibilities uh, to sort of expand past what we've always thought was possible for us. And the more that you believe is possible, the more that is possible. And um, that's, that's kind of the, you know, the epitome of of a QHHT session. You know, opening up your mind and believing in magic and miracles and transformation, and um, kind of watch it happen, um, either very quickly or very, you know, more gently and gradually. And neither one is better than the other. Because <laughs> that very, kind of, very you true. Know, that's, that's another thing to talk about right there. You know, Dolores talked about, you know, instant healing. And in the session, sometimes the the higher power, the SC, will, will absolutely provide and uh, agree to healing. And sometimes the clients stand up and they are absolutely physically changed in so many ways. Um Sometimes cartilage and knees are rebuilt. Sometimes, you know, bones are repaired. Achilles tendons are repaired. Healing, or excuse me, hearing restored, etc. But sometimes the, the healing is more gradual and it takes time for it to manifest. And neither is better than the other. Sometimes the, you know, absolute instantaneous ones are, they make for a better show. But it's not always uh, the best way. Uh, sometimes with people's belief systems or with their lifestyle or, or who knows what. You know, we, we can only surmise. We can only guess at some of these mysteries, you know, why this works. But some people 
leave and then the healing gradually comes about. And um, that was my own case with uh, my own session with Dolores Cannon. I I was granted instant healing in that demonstration class. When I sat up, I was ready to be completely healed, you know, by uh, having a session with the great Dolores Cannon there with with, uh, the classroom looking on. And I sat up and my body hurt just as much as it did when when I laid down. But you know what? It slowly, slowly um, left me. The pain left me as, as I began to do it my higher self instructed and pretty soon I, you know, I left that physical challenge behind me and that's another way that people heal in these sessions. That is so true. It's uh, again, we can't predict if it's going to be instantaneous or if it's an ongoing process. Um, As practitioners, we can ask the higher self of the client, you know, um, can this be completely taken care of today? Um, mm-hmm. or is this a work in progress, and um, the the SC will say, um, we're still working on it, you know, and they'll be working mm-hmm. on it during the session and stuff, or they'll say, nope, it's all done, or, mm-hmm. you know, over the next couple of days, um, sometimes the message comes through about medications, and um, it's something like, you know, they can start tapering off. Um, medication. Mm-hmm. Now, again, you know, that's something that people need to decide. Are they willing to do that? Do they want to talk to their doctor? Mm. It's it's their call. Um, it's it's their call. Um, so, if you want to, um, I went through my own detox because I had some chronic uh, disease processes. And I went through my own detox in a very slow, methodical way. Um, But it worked. You know, again, it's individual. Mm -hmm. So individual. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I I think we should mention how a listener that would like a session with either you or myself can get in contact with us um, besides going to Dolores' website and they can look at the list of practitioners sure. there. So we'll give Dolores' sure. website, which is www.doloresCannon.com. And on there, there's you'll see, you know, the menu, and you can find a practitioner um, anywhere around the world. Um, they're listed there, and uh, they're mm-hmm. listed by country, um, and then the United States is listed by, you know, region. So there are tons mm-hmm. of practitioners out there. Over, what, 4,000, I think? Is it? I don't even know. There's a lot. It keeps changing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they can find me. Um, I'm in Loveland, Colorado. And they mm-hmm. can find me through the website, which is www.mj. And my last name, Olinger, O L I N G E R, dot com. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Candace? Oh, thank you so much. Well, we have uh, what I do want to mention that those who uh, participate in our dedicated practitioner community, we have uh, special photo listings at Dolores Cannon Q H H T dot com. That's Dolores Cannon. QHHT.com with uh, worldwide listings in, by country, state, city, etc. cetera, um, uh, with photos, uh, which can help you find the right practitioner for you. And you can find me um, on Dolores, excuse me, on Dolores' website, of course, yes, but newearthjourney.com. That is newearthjourney.com. And my practice is here in the heartland. In um, in Kansas, near the city, near the city of Wichita, and MJ, you and I have been at it for now for um, more than, gosh, more than two hours, and we don't really have any questions in the chat room, and I don't know that we have any. Let me check the the call ins. I don't see any one of our callers holding up their hands to ask questions. So maybe we've done just a really great job tonight and sort of answered everyone's questions. Um, without them having to ask very many. (laughs) 
<laughs> Good job. Well, there's okay. always the archive. So yes. the people that Absolutely. can listen to it tomorrow mm-hmm. or, and thereafter and and mm-hmm. the information will still be pertinent and current. So Yes, it will. And we'll get it up on on YouTube, et cetera. So the the replay of this uh, broadcast will be av- available in, in several different ways. Well, I want to thank you well, so very much, too, for for taking the time out of your evening to spend a little time with, with me and, and talking about Dolores and QHHT, probably my favorite subject in the world. It's, it's been really um, very enjoyable. I, I so enjoy you as a colleague and as a friend and the, the really wonderful work you're doing with the indexing. You know, you really are, are our... Um, a QHHT scholar, you know. Well, it's been a work of love, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And and, and I love working with Dolores' energy in her books because there are energy that flows Mm -hmm. when when you come in contact with her work. And I know you mentioned that you would like to do a, a program, a radio program sometime in the future on some of her books and and that would be fun because there is uh, mega information that she writes about, and we can give together. We can give the backstories of those books as well. So, I let cl- um, listeners know that there will be something um, in the future for that. But um, maybe tell us what's coming up with some of your guests that you'll be having. Oh, sure. Well, you know, this program is to talk about um, QHHT and quantum healing, primarily the practitioners who who are carrying on with Dolores' work. But I love the idea that we can bring clients on. You know, last week we had the, the wonderful Mary Truitt and her client Miguel showed up. And we're going to have more of that for sure. But I really want to, in the future, talk talk to some people who are studying, you know, really studying the brain, et cetera, and how is this actually working? You know, it, let's talk about the rewiring of the brain and the neural pathways, et cetera. And, and those kinds of things are in the future, but, but it's the stories right now that we want, that I want to focus on. And there's so many great practitioners with so many great stories. And I do want to tell you that coming up next week, we're going to have the amazing Barbara Becker, and um, Holly Duckworth, both practitioners of Dolores' method, and they have had some amazing adventures uh, swapping sessions with each other, and they're going to come on the show next week to talk about some of that. So I really look forward to speaking with Barbara and Holly next weekend. Great. I'm going to listen in. Um, It's been fun (laughs) being your guest. And uh, appreciate um, our interaction, and I wish the best to all the listeners. So I'm going to turn it over to you and say good night, Candace. Thank you. Good night, MJ. Thank you so much for being here. And I want to thank all of you in the chat room and those of you who've called into the show. Thank you for taking time out of your evening to be with us today. And for those of you in the future, I hope that we've kind of covered some of the basics of QHHT in case you are thinking about having a session yourself. Um, Hopefully we've answered some of your questions or addressed some of your concerns. Please know that you can always contact um, any QHHT practitioner with these questions, or you can just send me an email at newearthjourney at gmail.com. I'd be more than pleased to help you, whether you're near Kansas or Uh, across the world, I'd be happy to assist in helping you find a practitioner near you. And so I want to thank N5D once again for allowing um, me the opportunity to carry on the work of the late, great Dolores Cannon with this show, Quantum Healing with Candace. And again, thank you all for being with both of us and all of us and Dolores this evening. Good night, everyone.